Hello and welcome back to the Novice Lumberjack. So, today I'm going to tell you guys all about my Hudson Homesteader 30. Um, the complaints and uh, the appraisals, all that kind of stuff. So, here you go. So, I have, or it has a Kohler engine. And I opted for the uh, pull start because I can do that. It's a uh, 13 and a half horsepower. So, so far this thing's been pretty fine with me and it, you know, it works good. I will say that it draws moisture really bad and that sucks uh, because you know, if I let it sit for a while, even though I, give, I get it covered up with a, a trash bag, Moisture gets in the gas tank, uh, and it's hard to start. Well, you can't start it. You got to drain the tank and all that stuff. So that sucks. But no real complaint. I mean, that would happen to about anything. So I got this saw because the way I figured it, it was the cheapest sawmill of reasonable quality, um, and that compared to or uh, coupled with it's the biggest um they advertise this thing as being able to handle a 36 inch log uh now will it handle a 36 inch log probably if you had a way to turn it uh but you know you put the log on there you can't turn it also the throat right this is what you actually cut all right so the throat will only open up to like 31 inches something like that maybe 32 i don't know so you would only be able to cut a slab 31 32 inches wide so how do they figure that it can handle a 36 inch log well because they figure you're going to put it on there the log is round you're going to cut it you know you're going to take off the uh you're going to try and square it up and make a square cant out of it you're going to turn it cut it turn it cut it by the time you get all four sides then it's probably going to be small enough to where you can actually fit it your throat will actually fit it all right so whatever um i was thinking that you know i'm going to be doing big stuff all the time and i do but the biggest thing that i've cut so far with this and until i mean until my wife and i bought this property I mean, yeah, I was probably, I, I knew more and had done more things than your average Joe, sure. But I wasn't too much more than an average Joe. So living here has opened up a world of woodworking and stuff that I, I never had before. So I thought, yeah, I want big stuff. Well, the biggest log that I've ever cut on here to date is the remnants. I mean, we still got leftover pieces of it. It was 24 inches in, in diameter. So from side to side, that log was 24 inches. Big red oak. <laughs> it's huge. If you've never dealt with this kind of stuff before, you can't imagine how big a 24 inch is. My gosh, it was a big log. And me and three other grown men, you know, with big cant hooks, uh, we're trying to turn it we couldn't all right now granted the log was 16 feet long still is right but uh we were trying to turn it with the cant hooks we just couldn't do it you know whatever fantasy you're having about buying a sawmill the reality is never as good ever so keep that in mind whatever you end up getting but we had to use the tractor to turn it so anyways <clears throat> that's the size issue I wanted it to be big uh, because I wanted to be I, I didn't want to be like I can't fit that on my sawmill you know I, I didn't want that right even though I knew that I probably wasn't gonna ever get a 36 inch log on here that's the way we think anyways so now at this point I'm glad still that I went for the bigger one because of the possibility right 
Also, the bigger one is going to have a bigger engine and uh, you're going to cut through the smaller stuff easier. Now, where that's important is to look at this 22-inch red oak. I had to go slow going through it. This 13 horsepower Kohler, it, it cut it, you know, but it didn't cut it with ease. All right. So now, <clears throat> specifics to the Hudson Mill. You know, size can be about anything, right? And I've told you why I wanted the size. Now, what do I think about the product? Here's where I'm gonna bitch a lot. But you gotta wait to the end because it all comes back around. First up, the uh, hold down system of the logs. Trash. It is absolute trash. Um, again, I don't wanna, it, it, it's hard to say, I don't wanna toot my horn, but damn it, there ain't a thing that I can't fix almost, right? So I'm extremely mechanically inclined. Um, I know what's going on, I know what I'm doing. And this mounting system is just horrible. Whoever designed it, I don't wanna treat you like crap because you know, I mean, Hey, it took a lot of work to design it and stuff, but you need to go back to the drawing board and Hudson Mill as a company, you need to accept that you're going to take whatever losses on this stupid mounting system that, that there is. All right. The reason why it's so stupid, I'm going to show you. All right. So first off, right off the bat, this right here is extremely difficult to get it to slide. Part of the reason is because this tube is square. This is square. Okay, anytime that this leans or any way, it naturally binds on itself. Also, it just sucks. All right, <laughs> so there's that. This right here, this leverage system, <clears throat> you got, you remove your leverage, all right? All right, my video just cut off on me. You remove your leverage, by going like that, bam, right? And now you should be able to slide this back and forth easily. Well, now what's happening is, right? I'm trying to slide it back and forth. It fell down, and so I gotta lift it up, but I can't lift it any further. Cause on the back side, it's hitting, hitting right there. So I'm finding myself constantly fighting with this crap. I mean, I fight with it. God, see, I can't even get it back up to show you guys further because I need a cant hook or something to, to move this log so that I can get it past that. See what I'm saying? But the other problem is these, this and this back piece are directly related to each other, right? They hook up to each other. And so at first, whenever you're cutting all this stuff, <coughs> Oh, oh, there it is. Finally. Oh. All right. So that's how you keep your 90 degree angle. And it doesn't work very well because all your pressure is up top because these are related. If one is up, the other one is up. All right. So that means it can stick out at the bottom. All right. So that's, that's shite. All right. But <coughs> besides, besides that, what you got to look at is you go, I want the best grip I can have on the log. And so you do it. <clears throat> oh, bear with me. There we go. There we go. Now it, it's tight. It's tight in. So you got a good grip on the log, even though it's up towards the top of the log. You got a good grip on the log. Well, now if you start cutting... This right here, let's say this was the, my top, right? You start cutting, you immediately get in danger of hitting this, right? And it's the same on the other side. It's just as high on the other side. And <clears throat> so, <laughs> this just sucks. And then if you wanna make this lower, you come down with it, and now it's sticking out like 18 inches over to here you don't have any real strength and it's just awkward and then whenever this 
back here is laying down really low you're not able to get a good 90 degree from that it's just everything about the mounting system i've literally not been able to find its saving grace at all the mounting system is terrible so i definitely at some point will design my own setup those i can't remember who has it norwood or or whatever but that little that where where it pinches the log at the bottom that looks to be about the best but that's enough about the mounting system the mounting system or the hold down system whatever you want to call it it's just absolute trash it's horrible it's horrible to work with you hear me i'm breathing heavy i actually had to exert quite a bit of energy on it just to do its job and i hate it all right next thing up is the rails uh the rails are fine uh but the least little bit of difference like where they made up to each other I have, uh, they're off. I don't know if you can see this, but where the rails made up to each other, this steel will have uh, discrepancies. And at the end where it's cut, it's sheer cut. So whenever that happens, you get these little bends at the end. So what you gotta do is you've got to take your grinder and smooth all that stuff out because as, as little as you see that thing, what, what you, you think that little um, discrepancy is, right? These are steel or some sort of metal wheels, and so they pick up every single bump. Again, this really isn't Hudson's fault. I'm just giving you guys a, to look out for it, right? Because whenever you're rolling along, if you hit something that's even a sixteenth of an inch up, the wheel has to go up and over it. And so that makes your cut go like that. Whenever, whenever you hit it, you get this bump in there or a dip or whatever. So that kind of sucks. But my biggest complaint about the Hudson Mill is this cage. This cage is again, trash. Um, I understand that they're building a cheap machine and I get it, you can't, you can't have cheap and high quality can't do it so this cage is made out of really small steel right we're talking it looks to me like it's about an inch and a quarter well hell inch and a half inch and a half square two right here uh this right here is probably one inch and you think yeah hey, it's fine you know well it ain't fine because this thing is wobbly and every time I'm cutting, this thing wobbles. You know, <laughs> especially, I know, it's gotta be funny looking right there. <laughs> That's what the blade is doing, and every time the blade wants to have a hard time, and this struggles, then it's literally making this cage twist. And this cage should not twist. There's the problem. Uh, it shouldn't twist at all. So, Whenever I first got it, I, uh, I brought it home, bought it in Alabama off this fella. He's a nice fella. He's their dealer in Alabama or whatever. No problem there or anything, but there is a little bit of a problem. So I get it home, I set it up. It's uh, really cutting horrible. I mean, it just won't cut. It's just wanting to dive and all this stuff. And you know, the, the, the blade is it's really bad. I'm like, what's going on? You know, what is going on? Well, anyways, after further inspection, I noticed that down here at the bottom, one of my welds on the, uh, on the cage was broken. The weld was broken. Now, if you know anything about welding, the weld separated from the metal it was welded to. Uh, that means the weld was bad. The weld broke. Never does weld break, you know? I mean, it, it just doesn't do it. Uh, I've seen not a good weld. A good weld will rip the actual primary material apart before the weld breaks. 
but it was not a good weld and it broke. So it was this one right here all the way at the bottom. It just literally came completely apart. And uh, I was like, well, son of a bitch. So I called, I called uh, Hudson, told him what was going on. Of course, they blamed me, you know. Well, it, it, it's your fault. And I was like, no, it ain't my fault, man. Come on, I've done all this stuff all my life. And if I did break it, taking it all, lifting it out of, off my trailer and onto this, that's all I did. I lifted it straight up and then straight onto this. I was like, if I did break it with my little tractor, then the product is bad. It shouldn't have broken that easily. But, you know, they wasn't hearing any of that. But they did send out the dealer, the guy in Alabama. Like I said, he was a good guy, nothing wrong. But you know, he was probably 65 or 70 years old and he was about to go through surgery to get his leg cut off, all right? He had, he was hobbling around, he had a big hole in his foot, right? Nothing against that guy, but he couldn't help me much at all, you know? He was old and he was about to get his leg cut off. And that's who they sent to help. And they gave no real support. What should have happened was I get a new cage. But I learned immediately, well, these are the things you deal with whenever you get a sawmill that is capable of handling a 36 inch log for $7,000. You can't expect the highest build quality, right? So I understood, I was like, well, I've got to fix this. So the guy, he helped me, you know, a little bit. And, you know, actually I, I think I let him, did I let him weld it? No, I didn't, I, I welded it. But anyways, I was set up with a welder. I could fix it, I did. It wasn't a big deal, but this cage has never been right. It's always wanted to so, sort of jump off of the, uh, the rails a little bit. Uh, not horrible bad, but it, it does. It wants to jump off the rails because it flexes so much. Whenever I got a big red oak on here, that that blade uh, is trying to cut through 20 inches of red oak. And every time it pulls, the cage flexes. And every time it happens, it happens quick. Pulls, flex, pulls, flex. And it makes it kind of bounce. And it will bounce off the cage if you go too fast. Also, if you bump it in any way, if you're mowing around and stuff, it wants to come off the rim. So, again, I understand I have all the parts here, right? For a guy like me that doesn't know anything about sawmills, where to buy stuff or anything, I don't even know where I'd buy the wheels. I don't even know what to call the wheels. The bearings, all that stuff is all kind of foreign to me but I have everything here. So someday, if I ever get to a point to where I want something better, I will build my own cage. And it will be made out of two by two, nice, thick, good steel, not this flimsy shit. So, now, remember said I was gonna bring it all back around? Talked a lot of negatives about this Hudson Mill. Here it is. You know what I got? I got a sawmill that is paid for that I can cut reasonably. I can cut 25 inch slabs out of this with this thing and it does a good job. Starts up, it runs, it cuts. Oh, I didn't talk about this. This system right here of raising, of raising and lowering. Again, this isn't Hudson Mills fault. But it's shit. It's a shit system. You can't, you can't be, uh, you you can't dial in the measurements very well at all. It's terrible. But it's a sawmill. It's not really supposed to be fine, fine cuts. You know, it's you, you got to understand that and take the good with the bad. I did have this cable just boop, come loose on me. Up here, they had little compression fittings that were keeping it together, and it just. Boop, came apart so I had to figure out all that if I had it to do over again would I have bought this one no I would not I would not have bought this one I probably would have saved up my money and bought one of the really good ones um, 
I don't know. I, don't, I probably would have bought this one because here's the thing. There's not a good option in between a $20,000 sawmill and a $3,000 sawmill. This is the best option you got in the middle. So I probably would have bought it, buy it again, but just know what to expect. All right. I talked a lot. I'm done talking. Novice Lumberjack out.